Welcome back to Zurich Crypto Journal and thank you for this recent uh, growth in uh, our subscribers on our channel. We uploaded some of the most interesting videos about uh, Bitcoin and some of the latest news. And as well, I wanted to thank you also um, our uh, followers on the uh, Zurich Crypto Journal forum TikTok. And also, um, if you want to follow us on uh, Twitter, we are also there. We are just uh, starting there. And we will try to keep you updated or to put some uh, information about the crypto market and, and its evolution. And here I wanted to show you a little bit of the evolution of uh, uh, the crypto space today. Uh, Bitcoin is again up uh, more than one trillion market cap. This is uh, again confirms our bullish scenario. And look at Ethereum. It's even having a better percentage increase over the uh, latest seven days and since many many months we are uh, really bullish on ethereum they are doing a lot of work vitalik Buterin, uh, is doing a lot of upgrades on the network and yeah i think that's gonna be really uh, depending on the success of those upgrades and i'm gonna talk about that a little bit later uh, this is gonna be really good for the ethereum holders so i'm uh, positively um, on the Ethereum performance and I think uh, it's gonna perform really really well over the next years of course that's not financial advice so uh, don't take this information as a financial advice but just as a uh, more entertainment purposes and do your own research but still um, if you look at the data here we see that there is like a recovery we had a jump um, I mean a, a kind of a pullbacks with the yields also going up that could affect our performance over the next uh, months or days as well. But I think over the long term, we are really comparing Bitcoin more and more to gold and Ethereum is completely different compared to Bitcoin, but it has also a lot of potential. And seeing the market cap, of course, there is even, uh, it could be a potential uh, bigger uh, gain if you see the, um, the market cap. And then here I wanted to talk today about Ethereum, but this is really, you see the price now we are close to $2,000 and I think we're gonna get there uh, very, very soon. And uh, again, but that's, we have to justify the reasons why. And then here we have, uh, um, we know the creator of Ethereum. We know uh, that they are working hard to make it work and not to lose against, for example, Cardano or uh, Polkadot, which are interesting projects. I don't want to say that they're not. They could be also successful, but still we have to observe um, and to admit that uh, Ethereum is still uh, biggest, the biggest uh, on the uh, DeFi ecosystem and is also launching a lot of interesting projects like Ethereum 2.0. So, and the concept of sharding, that's something I want to go through right now because it's um, a little bit complex, but I think it's useful to understand uh, future scalability for Bitcoin and also for Ethereum. I mean, this concept could be used uh, for um, many, many crypto once is uh, working. And Ethereum is like opening the way up for innovation. And that's really good for the, all this space, but especially for Ethereum. And I mean, 100x uh, more in scalability. What does it mean? I mean, you have to observe... Uh, and to understand what um, sharding is, is a new concept. I tried to took some information from actually from Wikipedia. You have already some data. I mean, you are just separating the database in several pieces. So we know that the blockchain is a database. You see that that table looks like the original, let's say the general ledger of the blockchain where every transaction is written and all the mining is done. And uh, yeah, there are different ways of doing uh, a better or an easier work. And sharding will be a way to uh, divide. So they can divide on a vertical partition or horizontal. So horizontal, you will see that we have uh, split it in half, okay? And uh, vertical, they split it in, actually they, they divide, uh, they take two of the columns in one side and the left column in another side. So, I mean, here, the work to do on this database will be much less. It's like if you have several blockchains inside one bigger blockchain. It's like 
mathematics, you can sum up the two and you get to this one. So the concept still works. You are just making it smaller and faster and easier to do. So uh, that's innovation. That's the kind of innovation we want to see. Something like for Bitcoin, the Lightning Network, which is, I want to talk about it and to explain it a little bit. When I saw that for the first time a few years ago, I said, yeah, this is great. There is a lot of potential. And I, I will show you what the Lightning Network is as well. I want to really, uh, but this is now for Ethereum sharding. I think uh, there is some risk, of course. It could uh, show potential threat to the network. We don't know how it's going to be implemented, but uh, you see that it's a better way in, in terms of rapidity. And uh, yeah, it could be really interesting. It could be really bullish for Ethereum. Of course, we don't know how the implementation is going to be. It's going to be, but yeah, that, that's really interesting. I think we, we might heard much more of sharding in the future. And here, that's a funny part. I mean, uh, Doge, uh, Elon Musk uh, created some kind of an hype on Doge. I'm not a fan of Doge. But it's even creating a city uh, where it wants to be dog dodge friendly. This was a kind of a fun uh, token. And now um, I think they, there are people looking for potential on this space and they are creating like copy. Hoge, it's like the another dog and it's a version of Doge. Okay, so but in a DeFi ecosystem. And uh, yeah, they started to partner with many, many uh, companies. And I think here I wouldn't really put uh, anything because of the risk. Of course, there could be huge returns, but also the risk is uh, pretty high, I think. And the value, what is the value? I mean, if somebody understands the value, please put a comment or try to explain it to me. For me, it's just more profiting from um, an hype at the moment. And I still also for Doge, I see many, many uh, problems potentially, which I don't see for Bitcoin, for example, or for Ethereum. So at the end, you try to uh, do your own, have your own opinion here. But uh, my opinion here is that I won't, I won't be into this uh, space. It was just more for fun. And it's interesting to see this, uh, uh, this news, this kind of news, but I wouldn't go in too much into that. And then I wanted to show you, that was from Bloomberg actually, and they said Bitcoin has zero intrinsic value. Some people are okay with that. So uh, yeah, of course we are okay with that. So this is um, like digital gold and or money. Also money doesn't have any intrinsic value. And gold has some intrinsic value, of course, because if used, um, but basically as a, as a commodity per se, it's just the, the value that people give to gold that make it valuable. Okay, so you can talk about the usage for gold. Uh, if you use it for some kind of chips, uh, Intel or kind of uh, small components that are really valuable, that could be a use case, of course, there could be some value there. But I think we don't need intrinsic value. This is like money, this is like a uh, store of value, this is just a concept that doesn't need at all um, intrinsic value, which is a uh, good thing to remember sometimes. Uh, things say, yeah, Bitcoin is based on thin hair. Yeah, somehow, yes. Uh, thin hair like digital paper uh, or fiat currency. I mean, people have to believe. The trust has some value. If people believe and people keep it and people buy it, uh, that will be a network and that will be a monetary network. And that's what, what's happening today. So here, interesting, because I have uh, some information coming from uh, Mike McGlone, it's a senior um, commodity at, um, senior commodity manager at uh, Bloomberg. So, I mean, coming from the institutional space. And here I want to show you a little bit of, um, I mean, he's saying that Tesla, um, I mean, it is pretty bearish on Tesla. I'm, I'm not, I'm not bearish on Tesla for the long future. I think there are so many use cases. And it's a good time, I think, to, to be into the space, even if I um, couldn't personally get into the space of Tesla. So um, I think uh, it's a good timing now. Um, and but it's, what is surprising here, it sees Bitcoin at $80,000. So will be $30,000 more. This guy is a commodity uh, manager at Bloomberg. Uh, Bloomberg. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. And yeah, that's... Uh, also, he hires Amazon, so 
let's see if this Amazon is gonna get into the into the Bitcoin game. And again, that's even more <laughs> interesting from a guy that works in commodity. Uh, Mike McGlone saying in his Twitter, um, gold is pushing aside the old guard. So digital gold and digital gold is not gold, it's Bitcoin. And so gold will always have a place, of course, in jewelry and coin collections, but most of the indicators point to accelerating pace of Bitcoin. So <laughs> replacing the metal and as a store of value, um, I don't know if this is a joke or they are really, I mean, do they want to speculate about it and they want to sell some Bitcoins to people and, uh, or is it real? I mean, try to realize that this is a strange thing to hear, to, to hear right? from a guy that is in commodity trading, I mean, in a big company in New York. I mean, yeah, take it as an information and try to think about it, but I, it looks huge to me and I want to leave, leave you like that and try to do some research as well if you want. But uh, is Bitcoin eating gold market share and market uh, cap? As always, thank you and have a good day. <laughs>